Today we're making splits with queen cells with all of these boxes. Casey has joined me and look, he has a suit now. <laughs> so no more complaining about getting stung. <laughs> but it is June 9th, I think, 9th or 10th. So now's the time that we want to be making all of our splits so that we can increase our hive count. That way they have the rest of the summer to build up. So I'm going to show you how we like to do our splits with queen cells. Come on. So we have already been super busy today. Each one of these boxes, we kind of just like bulk style, went into one of our strongest yards and broke down some of our three and four stack hives. So we have all of these boxes with the B on it are all brood frames and all of these boxes with the R's on them are resource frames. So we're making 35 splits today. They're all gonna be two frame splits with a feeder frame in them because we will have to feed unfortunately this time of year. Usually this time of year is pretty good, but this year has been absolutely terrible with all of our flow. And honestly, this is the worst summer I've ever seen for bees when it comes to their nectar flow and what's coming in. And now they're practically starving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we're gonna be taking one brood frame, one resource frame, and then tomorrow we're gonna put in a queen cell. But why are we waiting till tomorrow and not putting the queen cell in today? Organization. <laughs> organization <laughs> yeah no and once it's all set we'll get the queen cell squared away but it gives them yep. a kind of a day to figure out what's happening and then tomorrow once they've orientated we can just plug the queen cell in yeah that way they're not uh super stressed out and they're not well too they still have the pheromone from the queen in them right now so we don't want them to all of a sudden decide to tear down that queen cell because they thought they had a queen, but really they don't They don't now. And it takes a little bit for them to get that pheromone out. So, yep. Yeah. All right, so we have everything lined up and prepped already. So this should just be super easy. Just kind of plug and go. Got no agenda, babe. You and me. Those eyes are telling stories. I want to see. You've got me questioning. Everything. Your lips are making moments heavenly. It's love, it's a touch now. Ah, I'm stuck in a quicker bush. That was not smart. Oh, this one's gonna need different mode though. We'll come, we'll come back. Cause we'll have to add a... Uh... Oh, that one barely has any bees. Yeah. This one barely has any bees. We'll need a shake. Yeah. So we're doing the brood frame against the wall. That's how hives usually like to make it. We're kind of making it so their entrance is going to be at the front over here. And to be 100% fair, these are actually not necessarily splits. These are two frame mating. Like we're mating queen cells. Yeah, so maybe I should reframe that. Not necessarily a split. No, this, is this is for mating. Yeah. So the mini mating nukes you guys saw before, because we haven't talked about that yet. So they actually did terrible. <laughs> and the reason for that is there was a little crack underneath the, um, wasn't it like that mesh? Yeah, the like, mesh needed to push back a little bit, and I didn't realize right that. Right in the front, yeah. So they all escaped um, during the time they were supposed to all just be trapped in there. So that kind of stinks, but, I mean, it is what it is. You live and you learn. That's a part of beekeeping. Yeah, so, so we're trying how, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hooterville? Hooterville, yes. Hooterville. Yeah, so we're going to, when we do do them, we're going to put them on top of hives and have them start building out the comb that way before we pull them. This is the weakest one here. So, yeah. So right now, we're gonna just do it, do it this way instead because of, like I mentioned, right now, this is the worst bee year we've ever had. 
um there's like no resources in the environment it just like shut off all the queens just kind of like shut off all of a sudden so it's better off just to do it this way so they don't have to draw out a ton of comb yeah these are actually just for mating queens like yeah so we're mating with these Yep, 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 and it'll boost another one. Um, and then this is how we're going to start. We have eight more pallets that we need to have filled. So 36, no, we have nine pallets. So it's 36 hives total that we need to make up before the year is out and get them all built up and ready for winter time. That is our goal. And maybe we can have these and all the equipment that we own. So we're using a smoker to keep them from all flying all about, um, otherwise you lose half your bees right when you open up the box. Bees do not like to be trapped in the box, which I do not blame them one bit. But they'll pick a hive and they'll go to it. Yeah, they will pick a hive and go to it. The only thing I'm worried about is we do have some hives in this yard that... We do have hives our queen right in this yard, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so bees will often pick the hive that has a queen, so I don't want them to go to those. It's the only, only thing. They're smart. They don't want to be hopelessly queenless. Even if they have a queen cell, they will abandon it. But there's a round of brood that's basically a day or two from hatching or emerging. And that will be what kind of boosts these up and kind of gives them time to go out, get mated, come back. And then we will build them in over the course of the summer. We'll build them up and build them up. And then we'll have them into 10 frame equipment by the end of the summer. And with some equalization stuff these hives will be wonderful yeah they definitely will I mean, so uh, we didn't mention that actually so when i said brood frames we are only selecting frames that have capped brood and the reason for that is if you select a frame that has open brood then they're gonna have to feed those and you don't really want that to be the case in a small hive like that like this that's gonna be a lot of energy they're gonna have to use just to keep those fed so yeah so we're trying to mate these queens we want to have a decent amount of bees with them This one? Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Um, so yeah. Just uh, if you ever decide to do this, that is why you want to pick capped brood over like open say, brood. Don't do what we do. This is just what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just taking you guys along for the journey, showing you all of the learning lessons and what we're doing to grow to the scale we're going to be at one day. Heck, maybe one day we'll have 10,000 hives. We'll see. But to be at that scale, it takes a lot of learning lessons that do not come overnight. That is for sure. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of hard work. So hope you guys enjoy coming along for the journey and just learning with us, you know? So yeah, we still have to find some feeder frames too, as you guys can see. We kind of have them a little bit scattered at the moment. Plus, it's nice to have um, a good system in terms of like, he puts the frames in, I put the lid on, or vice versa. We try to work together as a team. It doesn't take a ton of bees to mate a queen. It doesn't? It doesn't. Like, because you do it in mating you, and you get a, a couple of bees and you do it in mating you. So in two frames, it really doesn't take that many bees. Yep, over there. So I guess just my only thing is though, they do need enough bees to keep the brood warm. Now that is the only thing. Now this is the right time of year that okay, uh, it's not going to be too cold. Also this is older brood and older brood tends to have its own heat. It keeps its own heat. Yeah. When you get too young a brood and there's no heat for it. So the brood can actually keep itself sort of warm from what I gather. Dang, was that it? <laughs> Alright. 
And we'll go around and put bricks on too after. Kind of doing it like factory style at the moment. Here you go. No, so on the back on the topic of the brood actually creating its own heat, that is actually one of the problems that some nuke makers have. That that is why a nuke will overheat and they're all they will all die. One because there were too many bees in there, but two because there was too much brood in there too, also creating heat, and they just can't circulate all that out. I didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, that one's a little light on bees too. So we'll need to shake at the end. The first few frames fall out. Like. Yeah, because you have to, sh they pretty much all fall out when you pull them. That first frame. Why we just go back through and give all the way excess bees on the ground for that one. Yeah. Alright, then we're gonna be back over here. If you wanna switch jobs, we can, love. I don't wanna make you do all the heavy lifting. found the world's like ugliest fire oh my gosh yeah i'll put a picture up it was so big it was bigger than a half dollar which i realize now we're reaching the day and age that when i say half dollar there are going to be people watching that have no idea what i'm talking about because <laughs> they're not around anymore but i guess when it comes to beekeeping that won't be the case but anyways it was as big as a half dollar which is insane um, I did look it up. It's not poisonous, but it was still really scary. Nightmares. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind spiders. As long as they leave me alone, then I leave them alone. Now, if they find me in the shower, that's a whole different story. That is my personal space. And yeah, if they enter at their own risk, let's just say that. Um, I believe it was this one right here. Yep. Oh, that's a lot of bees. <laughs> um, I mean, it doesn't need that many. Can we like split it between a couple? No. As you see there is water going in there that is what we don't like about the gestures um they're corrugated plastic and it does collect into the sidewalls but that's okay these like water they need water actually one of our yards i realized i think that might be one of the problems they're having is i don't know if there's any water in the area for them we have five more nope six more nope <laughs> six seven eight nine ten so we have ten more Oh, we're doing pretty good. Oh, that one had that one chewed a hole through it. They do that sometimes. Um, this is not normally the type of foam that I like to use. I like to use insulation foam, so it's thicker. It's not like bigger pieces, I guess you could say. So they like to tear into this. The other kind they don't, but this is all they had, and we needed lids mm -hmm. ASAP. So that's what we went with, and it was pretty cheap. And uh, I have a big old grafting hive at home, which will help boost up a lot of the numbers in this. But yeah. Right now it's keeping my queen cells warm. Yep. So there will be more bees in all these. Yep. This is a step one. And we did make sure that we grabbed some drones in these too. It's always good to keep supplying your drone population when you're going to be putting bees and queens into a mating yard. Okay. We'll come back to that. 
That will be easy because it's one on the end. Also, doesn't the yard look so nice? Casey weed whacked and it looks fabulous now. It doesn't look like a jungle. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to pause it for a second until we're done. Alright, so I think Casey is finding one more frame to shake into these highs because they're a little bit, a little bit light. Just one. It doesn't have to be a really like heavy B1, just like a light one. Um... So I guess if someone was to ask me which way is a better way of making queens, mini mating nukes or doing them in a five frame. Honestly, it's personal preference and it depends on the circumstances. So if you're somebody who does not have a whole lot of equipment, the mini mating nukes work great. Also, if you don't have a whole lot of hives, because all you really need is bees and your queen cell to really get them going. But like I mentioned, you would want to have them already drawn out that'll help them actually stay because like i said before they will just abscond and leave that queen cell if they have no other reason to stay there if they have no comb why would they stay they would just leave and go somewhere else that's why you're generally supposed to lock them up but because of that crack in the hive it didn't really work um so versus doing it in the five frames you definitely need to have a lot more frames you need to have a lot more hives that are big and booming that you can actually pull from otherwise it's going to be really hard for you to mate so many queens but i don't know i kind of like this way because everything's just kind of standard but for a year when the bees are a little bit struggling. It sometimes is a little bit better just to pull bees versus pulling frames and whatnot. But, huh? Oh, this one was fine. Yeah, they're good for now. All right, so the mating yard is restocked. I have not even shown you guys yet about this hive. Well, let's save that for a different video, but we had a swarm move into our stack of boxes of frames that needed to just be repaired and needed a little bit of help. And they started repairing them for us, which is so cool. But anyways, what are you looking for? I thought there would be more bees in there. Oh, that's not the one we shook. This one had the triple on it. Oh, did I write that on there? Yeah. Okay. Did but they already you, leave? If you guys can tell, we picked, like, like for example, all this brood is going to emerge within a day yep. or two. See how they're already starting to emerge? Yeah, so this will uh, this will be completely... It, all the brood we picked was age timed correctly. Yep. There's that no the young larvae in here. Yep. That's so, the feed. They'll, they'll pop out. They have food to keep them going while they build up a workforce. The queen will go out and get made it. All blah, 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 blah. Yep. They'll come back, start laying. Yep. We'll give them frames. Yep. And they'll go well. <laughs> Someone's still a little camera shy. I don't want to. <laughs> well, dang. That sure was fast. So we will check back in tomorrow when we're adding queen cells.